The building centre in London is home to the UK Green Building Council, which is the government's sustainability buildings task group. EDTV came to interview their chief strategist, Jeremy Summary. How would you describe a green building? A green sustainable building is one that lasts for a very long time, is very versatile, can be adapted over its lifetime, and is very efficient in the way that it uses resources, both in terms of how it's built and developed over the time, and also in the energy that it consumes in operation. So what are the main targets for the UK Green Building Council? I think our principal ambition at the moment is to get towards zero carbon for new buildings. And what that requires us to do is to have very well insulated, very airtight buildings with a high degree of renewable technologies attached so we can generate electricity from our buildings and feed some of it back into the grid. So we're very focused on delivering zero carbon for new buildings and secondly to have a massive reduction in energy consumption of existing buildings and to achieve that within the next five to ten years. How will the green building sector uh, react to the recession? I think many people will look to making cuts at this time. It would seem the obvious thing to do. Cut your costs and worry about some of these uh, issues later on when the market recovers. But in fact, if you think about what needs to be addressed, it's all good business that should be addressed today. Why waste electricity? If you can cut your electricity bill now by putting in energy saving uh, efficiencies and renewable technologies, it's good business. So I think if you, if you think about this as less adding things to a building which appear to be expensive and think about the impacts of what you're doing, which is to waste fewer resources, to waste less energy, actually that's going to deliver bottom line improvements rather than simply not doing this work in the first place. Are there economic benefits to sustainable building? Most of the major companies that operate in this sector, whether it's architectural practices, engineering consultancies, product developers, product manufacturers and so on, see sustainability as absolutely mainstream, as fundamental to the long-term health and success of their business. But I do understand that it's a quite a difficult message to permeate throughout literally hundreds of thousands of individuals and organisations in our sector. So we need to get the language right, we need to have engaging communication and we need to show that this is a commercial opportunity at the end of the day. That this isn't about hair shirt, this isn't about making life difficult. There's a huge opportunity for businesses that take advantage. How do you think uh, will recent government policy affect the industry? There is going to be significant change in the industry as a result of Code for Sustainable Homes, site waste management plans and a whole raft of other regulatory frameworks being introduced into the market. Of that I don't think there's any doubt. The key issue is how will these regulations be applied and how will we ensure compliance. The roadmaps we're developing at the moment are focusing very much on the zero carbon for new homes agenda and what we're going to do with our existing building stock which accounts for almost 50% of all our emissions in the UK. And the way that we're doing that is if we set a very clear target for the next five or ten years and we start to think about the drivers that will deliver those targets then that's what we can clearly map on the roadmap and then work with our members and others to put in place the mechanisms to deliver on those targets. What are the main barriers though to promoting green building? I think there are two main barriers. The first one is about setting a clarity around what we mean by a green building. So setting those long-term targets for ourselves. And then secondly, how do we measure progress towards that? How do we set the standards and how do we measure and how do we get transparency so that we all agree we're genuinely making progress? I think for many people there is less scepticism around the issues of climate change. They want to participate, they want to do what they see as the right thing, but there's nothing in place for them to do it. We haven't got enough of the right products, we haven't got enough of the right skills, we haven't got enough people demanding all of this. So at the moment there's an awful lot of uh, slow progress, but there's no shortage of ambition and willingness to engage in the debate.